October 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 19 through 21 of the Old Testament. The Lord told Jeremiah, Go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Take with you some of the leaders of the people and some of the leaders of the priest. Go out to the part of the Hinnom Valley, which is near the entrance of the potsherd gate. Announce there what I tell you. Say, listen to what the Lord says, you kings of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I will bring a disaster on this place that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it ring. I will do so because these people have rejected me and have defiled this place. They have offered sacrifices in it to other gods, which neither they nor their ancestors nor the kings of Judah knew anything about. They have filled it with the blood of innocent children. They have built places here for worship of the god Baal so that they could sacrifice their children as burnt offerings to him in the fire. Such sacrifices are something I never commanded them to make. They are something I never told them to do. Indeed, such a thing never even entered my mind. So I, the Lord, say, The time will soon come that people will no longer call this place Topheth or the Hinnom Valley, but they will call this valley the Valley of Slaughter. In this place I will thwart the plans of the people of Judah and Jerusalem. I will deliver them over to the power of their enemies who are seeking to kill them. They will die by the sword at the hands of their enemies. I will make their dead bodies food for the birds and wild beasts to eat. I will make the city an object of horror, a thing to be hissed at. All who pass by it will be filled with horror and will hiss out their scorn because of all the disasters that have happened to it. I will reduce the people of this city to desperate straits during the siege imposed on it by their enemies who are seeking to kill them. I will make them so desperate that they will eat the flesh of their own sons and daughters and the flesh of one another. The Lord continued, Now break the jar in front of those who have come here with you. Tell them the Lord who rules over all says, I will do just as Jeremiah has done. I will smash this nation and this city as though it were a potter's vessel, which is broken beyond repair. The dead will be buried here in Topheth until there is no more room to bury them. I, the Lord, say, this is how I will deal with the city and its citizens. I will make it like Topheth. The houses in Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah will be defiled by dead bodies just like this place, Topheth. For they offered sacrifice to the stars and poured out drink offerings to other gods on the roofs of those houses. Then Jeremiah left Topheth where the Lord had sent him to give that prophecy. He went to the Lord's temple and stood in its courtyard and called out to all the people. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I will soon bring on this city and all the towns surrounding it, all the disaster I threatened to do to it. I will do so because they have stubbornly refused to pay any attention to what I have said. Now Pasher, son of Immer, heard Jeremiah prophesy these things. He was the priest who was chief of security in the Lord's temple. When he heard Jeremiah's prophecy, he had the prophet flogged. Then he put him in the stocks which were at the upper gate of Benjamin in the Lord's temple. But the next day, Pasher released Jeremiah from the stocks. When he did, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you is not Pasher, but terror is everywhere. For the Lord says, I will make both you and your friends terrified of what will happen to you. You will see all of them die by the swords of their enemies. I will hand all the people of Judah over to the king of Babylon. He will carry some of them away into exile in Babylon, and he will kill others of them with the sword. I will hand over all the wealth of this city to their enemies. I will hand over to them all the fruits of the labor of the people of the city and all their prized possessions as well as all the treasures of the kings of Judah. Their enemies will seize it all as plunder and carry it off to Babylon. You, Pasher, and all your household will go into exile in Babylon. You will die there, and you will be buried there. The same thing will happen to all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. Lord, you coerced me into being a prophet, and I allowed you to do it. 
You overcame my resistance and prevailed over me. Now I have become a constant laughing stock. Everyone ridicules me. For whenever I prophesy, I must cry out, Violence and destruction are coming. This message from the Lord has made me an object of continual insults and derision. Sometimes I think I will make no mention of his message. I will not speak as his messenger anymore. But then his message becomes like a fire locked up inside of me, burning in my heart and soul. I grow weary of trying to hold it in. I cannot contain it. I hear many whispering words of intrigue against me. Those who would cause me terror are everywhere. They are saying, come on, let's publicly denounce him. All my so-called friends are just watching for something that would lead to my downfall. They say perhaps he can be enticed into slipping up so we can prevail over him and get our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me to help me like an awe-inspiring warrior. Therefore, those who persecute me will fail and will not prevail over me. They will be thoroughly disgraced because they did not succeed. Their disgrace will never be forgotten. O Lord, who rules over all you, test and prove the righteousness you see into people's hearts and minds. Pay them back for what they have done because I trust you to vindicate my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he rescues the oppressed from the clutches of evildoers. Cursed be the day I was born. May that day not be blessed when my mother gave birth to me. Cursed be the man who made my father very glad when he brought him the news that a baby boy had been born to him. May that man be like the cities that the Lord destroyed without showing any mercy. May he hear a cry of distress in the morning and a battle cry at noon. For he did not kill me before I came from the womb, making my pregnant mother's womb my grave forever. Why did I ever come forth from my mother's womb? All I experience is trouble and grief, and I spend my days in shame. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah when King Zedekiah sent to him Pasher, son of Malchijah, and the priest Zephaniah, son of Maaseah. Zedekiah sent them to Jeremiah to ask, Please ask the Lord to come and help us, because King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon is attacking us. Maybe the Lord will perform one of his miracles as in times past and make him stop attacking us and leave. Jeremiah answered them, Tell Zedekiah that the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The forces at your disposal are now outside the walls, fighting against King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and the Babylonians who have you under siege. I will gather those forces back inside the city. In anger and fury and in wrath, I myself will fight against you with my mighty power and great strength. I will kill everything living in Jerusalem, people and animals alike. They will die from terrible diseases. Then I, the Lord, promise that I will hand over King Zedekiah of Judah, his officials, and any of the people who survived the war, starvation, and disease. I will hand them over to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and to their enemies who want to kill them. He will slaughter them with the sword. He will not show them any mercy, compassion, or pity. But tell the people of Jerusalem that the Lord says, I will give you a choice between two courses of action. One will result in life. The other will result in death. Those who stay in the city will die in battle or of starvation or disease. Those who leave the city and surrender to the Babylonians who are besieging it will live. They will escape with their lives. For I, the Lord, say that I am determined not to deliver the city but to bring disaster on it. It will be handed over to the king of Babylon, and he will destroy it with fire. The Lord told me to say to the royal court of Judah, Listen to what the Lord says, O royal family descended from David. The Lord says, See to it that people each day are judged fairly. Deliver those who have been robbed from those who oppress them. Otherwise my wrath will blaze out against you. It will burn like a fire that cannot be put out because of the evil that you have done. Listen, you who sit enthroned above the valley on a rocky plateau. I am opposed to you, says the Lord. You boast. No one can swoop down on us. No one can penetrate into our places of refuge. 
but I will punish you as your deeds deserve, says the Lord. I will set fire to your palace. It will burn up everything around it. God, Jeremiah's plea or frustration or tantrum at the end of chapter 20, it's one of my favorite places uh, in the Bible, mostly because I can relate to it. You know, a lot of times we read these stories and they seem like such fantastical people who always seem to do the right things, sometimes did wrong things, but eventually did the right things. And Jeremiah just seems like one of the most real people in the Bible, in in all honesty. I I know I could never be like Paul. Uh, He's just too perfect. (laughs) I know I could never be like David and have messed up so bad in my life and and then completely turn my whole life around. I know I couldn't do any of those things, obviously, without you. But Jeremiah is doing amazing things for you and yet he's he's hurt and he's in pain and he's in sorrow and perhaps a little bit in depression he's younger he's single nobody likes him he's definitely an outcast and yet even if he wanted to stop talking about you and all the things you're putting in his heart He says, I can't. They just continue to come out. Even if I wanted to stop them, I can't. God, I know that as Christians, we are called to live a joy-filled life. We're called to be unselfish. We're called to to be obedient and and humble and grateful for all that you've done. And, And trust me. Well, you don't need to trust me. You know my heart. You know that I, I feel that way. But I'm also at times like Jeremiah where I'm selfish and I forget the reason that I'm actually here on earth. Sometimes I actually think I'm here on earth to enjoy what everybody else enjoys here on earth. Whether that be entertainment or relationship or acknowledgement of who I am here on earth. All those things that were taken away from Jeremiah, I understand his pain. At times... I, for all the wrong reasons, just kind of want to be normal. I want people to like me, not persecute me. I want to not be odd. I want to fit in. I want to have the trappings of the middle class. (laughs) The husband, the kids, the house. And I know those are just selfish, selfish desires over what I know you sent me here to do and and why you have me wake up every single morning and and do those things. And Jeremiah knows that too, because you know our hearts. But sometimes we just get consumed with the selfishness of our small minds and our five minutes here on earth, our little blip on the radar. And we get caught up in the marketing message of society and, and what the world has to offer us. And the momentary gratification at that moment seems bigger than than the totality of the story you have for us, God. In this day and age of, of the internet, where things just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, we go from MySpace which was pretty lengthy, to Facebook, which is like kind of a couple sentences or maybe just a link, to Twitter, which is only 140 characters. Now, Vine, which is, you know, seven seconds. Our attention span just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we value such smaller portions of things. God, I ask that when my heart goes into those smaller spaces, that you remind me how big you are. That you remind me that you're sovereign over everything in this world, including my story with you. That when I seek the things of this earth, please remind me what you have in store for me. And yeah, it it might be a story like Jeremiah, where people won't like me, where I'll be persecuted. 
where I'll be odd, where I'll be single, where I'll, I'll be different than other people. But just like Jeremiah knew, I also know that you were right here with me. Through all these times where I don't fit into this world, I know that you're right with me because I fit into yours. And even though I don't get that picture yet, well, not any more than my selfish heart will allow me, I know that you do. I know that you know the plan for my life you have before I was even born. And God, I don't need to know that plan. I just need to trust in you. That's all it comes down to. So God, allow me to trust in your big plan, in your sovereignty, in your hugeness in my life. And allow me to quit taking on the small things in my life and making them big. In your son's name I pray, amen.